Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The Obama administration has announced that it's giving up, at least for now, the idea of cutting Social Security benefits with an inflation accounting adjustment known as a chained CPI. Social Security cuts, as we've often noted, are enormously unpopular with the public, but still considered the wisest or only possible course by the media elite. No surprise, then, to hear the decision bemoaned as a huge disappointment on the Washington Post editorial page, which declared that Obama has abdicated what little leadership on entitlement reform he had shown. On CBS's Face the Nation, I mean, when the president comes out and says he's not going to touch entitlement reform, that's like waving a red flag in front of uh, a bull to the Republicans. I mean, uh, have we given up on, on trying to get anything done? Over on Meet the Press, we had New York Times columnist David Brooks. What are the things that are going to help the economy in the near term? Immigration would be a huge boost for the economy. A fast track, a trade deal across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, huge boost. Chain CPI would save a trillion dollars in, in the second decade off the federal budget debt. So these are all gigantic, very good policies where there is majority support and where in the old days in Washington, you'd cobble together a bipartisan coalition and get rid of the, the fringes. You have to wonder what he means by support. He can't mean the public, since except for immigration, these policies are unpopular. But pundits love to declare that everyone reasonable supports ideas that are really mainly popular with them. After a decade of fighting two ground wars, it might not come as a big surprise that the U.S. military, for a number of reasons, might start to shrink. Nonetheless, news that the Pentagon would be making a budget recommendation that included a reduction in the size of the armed forces led to some panicky media coverage. Take ABC Pentagon correspondent Martha Raddatz. Her February 24th report stressed that a fighting force of 440,000 would be smaller than it was before World War II in Vietnam. She added, Critics say the cuts signal a weakness and an opportunity to future enemies. And if that wasn't scary enough, she went on. But here is one haunting thought, Diane. A recently retired general told me today he worries about slashing the number of troops. He said he remembers the day before 9-11 when he held in his hand a recommendation to cut America's troops. Of course, that is a cut, Diane, that never happened. So last time there was talk of reducing troop levels, there was a terrorist attack. But why mention that and not refer to, say, troop reductions in the early 90s? Why not mention the size of the U.S. military budget relative to the rest of the world? Why not mention, as some other reporters did, that this new budget actually calls for spending increases in the short term? Maybe because that wouldn't achieve the desired effect. And finally, Arizona Governor Jan Brewer vetoed a bill passed by the state legislature that would have allowed business owners to discriminate against gay and lesbian people and others on religious grounds. But not before mainstream media had a chance to demonstrate their mealy-mouthed approach to talking about discrimination, even when it's this unsubtle. The New York Times led the pack with this headline. True, many people did view the anti-gay bill as anti-gay. CNN told viewers that critics say the measure is aimed largely at denying service to gays and lesbians, though it seems equally true to say that proponents saw it that way too. NBC Nightly News viewers got this. On our broadcast tonight, battle lines in Arizona over a controversial plan that some say would legalize discrimination. And indeed, that is the likely impact of a law legalizing discrimination. Finally, the Sacramento Bee wanted folks to know that the backlash has come not just from the usual liberal suspects and gay activists, though in fact, it has been particularly worrisome to the gay community, which sees this as the sanctioning of anti-gay discrimination. Next up, perhaps, slavery, viewed by some critics as anti-black. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.